Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this Warriors Corner on day three. Uh, at this time, please give a warm welcome for Sergeants Major Jose Bueno and Christina Botti from U.S. Army South. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sergeant Major Christina Botti, and of course, I'm joined by Sergeant Major Jose Bueno, and we're both from Army South. Over the course of this presentation, we will provide an overview of the U.S. Army South Partner Nation Non-Commissioned Officer Professional Develop Program and highlights of the programs and events Army South has partnered on in the last year. We will also talk about our way ahead for the future. When we're complete, of course, we're going to open it up for questions. Next slide. Good morning. The NCO Professional Develop Program is an Army South imperative that supports our, our four lines of effort. The overall objective is to provide our partner nations and allies the ability to achieve NCO development objectives that are nested in order for them to build competent NCO cores. NCOs executing these partner activities enable a focused effort across our region and support the U.S. Southcom's imperatives, access, and freedom of maneuver. The NCO development program integrates the collective expertise of re and resources of NCOs of the institutional force, our state partnership program, and the Army Reserve. The end state is to focus our engagements with our partner nations and allow them to shape their force, to shape their NCOs, and also for them to take ownership of their desired goals and end states. So the Army South NCO Professional Development Program has been in full swing for just about a year. And we all know that a capable and professional NCO Corps is a fundamental component of a modern Army. And this program focuses on partner nation capabilities and building that capacity. The NCO Development Program is based on a three-level framework. Within that three-level framework, we consider an advanced partner as one that is identified as a nation who has demonstrated a commiserate level of NCO development. They assign NCOs in appropriate positions and authorize them to execute initiative. They also host friendly nations into their NCOES program, and they allow their NCOs to attend U.S. NCOES programs. An intermediate or a level two partner nation is one where a valid merit-based promotion system exists, has an NCOES established to train NCOs, they allow some initiative in their NCOs, and they assign NCOs to positions commensurate with their rank. Last, a basic or a level one partner nation has no NCOES in place. There are only rudimentary NCO positions and NCOs are not in leadership roles. Next slide. So the next portion of our presentation, so our Major Bueno and I will highlight a country within each of these three levels. The first one we'd like to highlight is Colombia. So throughout the last year, Army South has worked closely with the nation of Colombia to help enhance an already robust NCO Corps. And by robust, I'm talking numbers. So the Colombian NCO Corps is composed of about 31,000 combat arms NCOs, 1,500 logistics NCOs, and 1,200 administrative NCOs for a total number of just under 33,000. And the path to become an NCO is quite long for them. After an 18-month conscription period, each soldier in the Colombian Army is required to make a life choice. They can either stay a soldier, they can become an NCO, or they can become an officer. Those who choose to become an NCO then attend a two-year course and at the completion of that course, they are taught leadership, they're given stripes, and they get an associate's degree in a desired discipline. Next slide. Colombia is looking to modernize the way they train new recruits. And in order to do this and standardize their training, the Colombian and U.S. armies continue to build stronger bonds and were posture for follow-on assessments, visits, and by, by some of the delegations and our experts, while we provide the best blend possible of areas of expertise in doctrine, facilities, and in the training domain. While we also involve in multinational senior level NCOs, we bring the best blend possible for our partner nations and allies. We also want to continue to be their partner of choice. In support of Colombian Army transformation, in particular, the Colombian Army reform efforts to build their NCO capacity and institutions, the Army South Command Sergeant Major, the Colombian Army Sergeant Major of the Army, 
and the Colombian Sergeant Major Academy students conduct a Jewish strategic visit at the end of each of their courses, their five-month course, for their Joint Sergeant Major Academy students. This 10-day visit is as part of PISAGE, which stands for, in Spanish, Programa Integral de Suboficiales de Alta Jerarquía, which is a Joint Sergeant Major Academy, which also involves other partner nations, and is a part of an Agreement to Action, or ATA, during our staff talks with Colombia. The event obviously supports our four military imperatives of human rights, gender perspective and initiatives, NCOPD, and jointness. The Pisaje visits are conducted twice a year with SMA Argemedio Pozo as their leader, and he varies his request in different locations and focus areas in order to strengthen the Colombian Army reform efforts and their transformation process. The last visit earlier this year, May 2017, was conducted to the Drill Sergeant Academy at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. The Colombian Army Drill Leader Program is in the beginning stages, but it is a very, very high priority for SMA Pozo. This engagement of Pisaje uh, focused on mutual objectives from us, the Colombian Army, and it was built upon the education and the knowledge of the U.S. Army's drill sergeants, uh, the U.S. Army drill sergeant role, and also to assist our partners in that training domain capacity. The visit to the academy was so fruitful that SMA Postal is requesting to go back at the end of this month for what would be Pisaje 8 for a second visit to that academy. The Colombian Army obviously has a vested interest in expanding the roles and responsibilities of their NCO. After 51 years of conflict, SMA Postal recognizes the need to bring discipline and basic level training back to his soldiers and his troops. Working with our Colombian uh, counterpart to help them build that capacity that they desire is not only beneficial to the Colombian Army, but is also beneficial to the U.S. Army as they continue to be uh, one of our major allies, a strong influencer, and one of our partners of choice within the region. Next slide, please. So an example of a level two or an intermediate country is our partnership with Brazil. So to become an NCO in Brazil, an individual must apply and subsequently be accepted into the NCO Academy. The application process consists of an aptitude test, a physical test, and a medical test. Only about a third of those who apply get accepted. The process to become an NCO takes 18 months. The first eight months take place at the military zones where they focus on military training, and the last year is spent at training centers depending on their specialty. The duties and responsibilities for the Brazilian NCO Corps match, though, match with those found in most modern armies. That is, they are responsible for individual training the and the accomplishment of the mission, and they are responsible for the care and welfare of their soldiers. So in an effort to continue modernization of their NCO force, the Brazilian Army has recently created the Adjunto de Commando, or CSM equivalent program. Taking lessons learned from working with the U.S. Army, the Brazilian Army launched a pilot program in 2014 to train and assign a Junto State Commando throughout the Army to serve as advisors to the commander at battalion level and above. In 2016, the program was approved as a program of record and instituted across the Brazilian Army. The process to enable the topmost NCO was not quick, and it wasn't easy. It took four years of planning before its, in before its inception. The concept of the Adjunto de Commando was introduced to the Brazilian Army in 2012 and didn't gain support or recognition from the Brazilian Army commander until 2014. When it was created, the roles, duties, and responsibilities of the Adjunto de Commando were developed with the help of the U.S. Army and experience gained by those Brazilian Army NCOs that attended USASMA. So in 2016, when the concept became a program of record, the course was moved from the 4th Mechanized Brigade to EASA, or the Advanced NCO School for Combat Arms, and a place where a current U.S. Army Master Sergeant is an instructor as part of the Military Personnel Exchange Program. 
A recent agreed to actions from our staff talks with Brazil have put planning into motion for an expanded NCO professional development exchanges to include training exchanges with Rangers and our special operations forces. These five-year planned engagements with Brazil will lead to the goal of an NCO Corps that is an integral part of Army leadership capable of conducting interoperable operations with our partner nations and our allies. Next slide, please. The last country we'd like to highlight is a basic or level one country, the Dominican Republic. Upon initial assessments within NCOs of the Dominican Republic Army, it was discovered that there were no NCO positions established, no existing uh, policies for NCOs, no promotion systems in place, professional military education, or NCOES. But it was also the discovered that there were some specific requirements prior to joining or becoming an NCO type role. Some of these requirements included having a minimum of 15 years time in service, to being able to pass a cultural exam, to have a high school degree or, or equivalent, and also to pass the basic infantry course. U.S. Army South is and will continue to work with their Army in the development starting with their top three NCO ranks. We'll also work with them in developing policies that define the role of the non-commissioned officer and to include a, a promotion system and NCOES. Next slide, please. In August of 2017, U.S. Army South participated in a visit by a legislative delegation from the Dominican Republic to Fort Benning, Georgia. The idea was to continue promoting their development of their NCO Corps. Dominican Republic passed Ley Organica, or Organic Law, recently. This particular law establishes the need for a professional, a dedicated NCO Corps for the betterment of their military. It also stated that the Dominican Republic Army would have to come up with their particulars. Army South has worked on a five-year glide path that identifies some actions to be taken in order to properly assist and help in the development of that NCO cord. The glide path takes into account the dot mill PF architecture as a means of orderly development. Additionally, at the end of this year, with the transfer of responsibility of the Permanent Executive Secretariat for the Conference of the American Armies, the U.S. will provide the Dominican Republic with a senior NCO as a liaison officer. Typically, this duty has been fulfilled from one CAA Army member to another one by two officers, a colonel and a lieutenant colonel. One will be to serve as their undersecretary and the other one as an operations officer. For this 30-second cycle, and additionally for the 33rd cycle, upon the request of the Dominican Republic Army Commander to the Commanding General of Army South, the U.S. will provide them with the Sergeant First Class to fill in this operations position, which will be key because not only will that NCO be able to advise in all matters related to the Conference of the American Armies, but he will also enhance our NCO professional development efforts within the Dominican Republic and will also demonstrate our commitment towards working on the achievements of common goals for our partner nations within our region. Next slide, please. So along with Colombia, Brazil, and the Dominican Republic, Army South has worked with our partner nations of Peru and El Salvador to map out five-year plans to help build capacity of their NCO Corps. It is important to understand that all of our 31 sovereign nations within the AOR are different, and the NCO development program will be developed specifically to that nation's goals, desires, and previous efforts within their regions. The program is only launched once the partner nation expresses an interest in building the professional development of their NCO core. Once a partner nation has expressed a commitment to build that capacity, the program will direct a comprehensive assessment and a series of leader engagements. Program NCOICs manage the assessment and strategy development, as well as the integration into the country cooperation plans. Army South leaders execute this program with the highest priority in order to achieve regional objectives, as well as continue our partner nation efforts to build capacity and to foster positive relationships. A professional NCO Corps is a key ingredient to our modern military. 
by empowering NCOs at all levels and demanding these NCOs possess a high level of skills and leadership capabilities, military commanders are maximizing the human capital within their formations. By adopting a decentralized execution to their mission command philosophy, commanders will effectively extend their power base by making them accountable for more. As we all know, many of those macro and micro actions occur simultaneously in this decentralized model, often without the supervision of an officer. US NCOs pride themselves on the ability to operate with little to no supervision from their officers to accomplish this mission. Sharing this mindset with our partner nations and helping them build an NCO capacity is key in total army capacity building and fostering relationships and truly epitomizes the Army South motto of Juntos Podemos, together we can. So if there are any questions. Questions? What have been the biggest challenges that you've faced with NCO professional development in the AOR? Thank you for that question, sir. Uh, from my experience, one of, one of the bigger challenges that I have experienced with our partner nations has been the mindset of some of our partner nation officers as far as when it comes down to delegating that authority to that non-commissioned officer. Obviously, it's not like the U.S. mindset of our, of our officers where they entrust and they empower not only the junior officers but the NCOs and junior NCOs. Uh, part of it, what I believe is, it comes from some of these countries, their education level. Some of these countries, they enlist soldiers and, for, you know, go on to become NCOs, but they come from small rural areas where their education level, it's, you know, some of them can't even read or write. So I think that has, that has a part of it, but I think it's the major challenge is that culture and that mindset, in my opinion, against her, it's from that officer, that commander, to empower that NCO, to allow him, for him to focus on bigger areas of emphasis. Uh, with the countries that you're working with, um, uh, can you uh, talk a little bit about um, within their NCO uh, core programs, uh, gender integration, or how, how are they advancing with gender in integration? Good question, sir. As we saw, gender integration is a Southcom imperative. Um, from my experience, I recently returned from Colombia, where females in the Army is still a pretty new concept. So. At that point in time, there hadn't been any females in long enough to become NCOs, but it is something that the Colombian Army SMA is, is actively working on. Sir, also, as I mentioned on one of the uh, visits, still sticking with our partner of Colombia, the Pisaje visits, SMA Pozo uh, constantly tries to implement that within his army. So the Pisaje visit, these are all command sergeants majors that are getting ready to take over brigades. And one of the things that he does is he brings a female with that delegation or with that team so that they can see the U.S. Army as one of our imperatives that we are, we are focusing in Southcom and Army South of that gender integration. They see that on the last one on Pisaje 7, they actually had a panel for that, that involved not only female drill sergeants but just female soldiers in general. And all of our 31 nations are very, very different. So we use Colombia as an example because they are a partner of choice and they do have a very robust NCO program. Um, another country in, in terms of gender integration that I've seen is Guyana. Guyanese NCOs, there are females at all levels, from sergeant to sergeant major, what they call warrant officer, being more on the British system. So it just really depends on the country and depends on the culture of that particular country, where they are with gender integration. Anything else? Any other questions? Okay, there are no further questions. We thank you for your time. And this completes our presentation, Juntos Podemos.